Hello beautiful people, it's Natasha aka Wellness Diva Chronicles Keto back with another video. I hope you all are safe and being well. And today we have a very interesting bread recipe using lupin flour and almond flour. So let's get into it. I start by adding one cup of blanched almond flour to my sieve. Next, I add in three tablespoons of the lupin flour, aka miracle flour. Then add in the baking powder and salt. I then added in two teaspoons of xanthan gum because I find that it really helps with the texture. It makes the bread more spongy and more traditional. I then went ahead and added in oat fiber. And guys, this is not like regular oats with a lot of carbs. This is strictly the fiber, so it does boost the fiber level in the bread and helps reduce the net carb level. Once you've sifted all your dry ingredients together well, you can go ahead and add three eggs to the dry mix. Then go ahead and add your melted butter to the bowl. Then go ahead and give the mixture a nice whisk just to get all the ingredients initially combined. We're gonna go in later with an electric mixer, but this is a good start just to get things going. I went ahead and added some instant active yeast to some warm, heavy cream. You don't want it to be too hot, about 120 degrees as not to ruin the yeast. I wanted to see if I could get the, bre the bread to rise a bit higher. I'm not sure that this worked, but it came out great anyway in the end. Then add the cream and the active yeast to the mixture. I also added two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar to the mix. Then go ahead and give the entire mixture a nice stir. Make sure everything's combined. No need to over mix, but just make sure everything's equally combined. Now I go in with my electric hand mixer on the lowest speed just to really make sure that everything has come together properly. Everything is combined. All the ingredients are together and the dough is nice and silky, kind of creamy, a little bit tacky and sticky. This part of the mixing process should take only about a minute or so. And if you haven't done so yet, this is a great time to preheat your oven to 305 degrees Fahrenheit. You're going to want to line your baking pan with parchment paper for safety. I also tend to go in either with a nonstick spray or ghee, whichever I have on hand. Today I had ghee. Either will work just fine. The 
The batter is a little bit sticky, so just be patient and work it into the pan evenly. Try to get the layer as even as possible so that it bakes up as even as possible. But yes, it might take a few minutes to get this done, but no worries, the bread is gonna be really good, so it'll be worth it. The bread loaf came out lower than I thought it would, like I thought that it would fill the pan more. It initially said, the recipe said to cook it for 40 minutes, but no ma'am. This is how it came out after 20 minutes. So watch your oven, because each one runs hotter than others. Because the slices would have been a little bit short, I went the same route as I did when I made my egg loaf and just cut it vertically like you see me doing it instead of cutting it the average way. And it came out to be regular sandwich slices. So just a little diva tip. It might take a minute to figure out how thin you can cut it without <laughs> it being porous, but you'll figure it out, especially by the second half of the slice. I could see this bread being great for sandwiches, of course, for grilled cheese, for French toast, even maybe like Louisiana bread pudding. You can do so many things with it, it's up to you, but in this case, I was just making a sandwich this time for lunch. I hope you guys enjoy eating this bread as much as I loved making the video for you. And of course, until the next time, all my divas and diva family, stay safe and be well.